Okay, we're back and we're continuing our examples of simplifying square root expressions or simplifying radical expressions. And here's our next example. The square root of 20a squared over b cubed. Okay, how do we simplify this? Well, as usual, let's rewrite it and try to factor this. 20 is 4 times 5 and we still have the a squared and in the denominator we have b cubed which is b squared times b. So what happens here? Well, the 4 can come out from under the radical and become a 2. The a squared comes out from under the radical and becomes an a. And this b squared down here, it's going to come out from under the radical and become a b in the denominator. So we end up with a, a 2 and an a in the numerator. And that 2 came from square rooting the 4. And the a came from square rooting that a squared. And in the denominator, we get a b, and the b came from square rooting that b squared. And then we still have a radical, still have a 5 under the radical in the numerator, and the b under the radical in the denominator. So this is times the square root of 5 over b. Now we could uh, rationalize the denominator here, or get this radical out from under the denominator. This, this is a good answer right here. But um, a lot of math teachers are going to insist that you not leave that under the a fraction under the radical. So you should know how to do that. So let's take care of that. We can um, we can extend this square root, and I'm going to multiply by b over b. That gives me a b squared right down here. And I can do this. Multiplying by 1 is fine. b over b is just 1. So I haven't changed the, the value of my expression here. I haven't changed the expression mathematically. So multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. But it does change the form. It doesn't change the, the, um, the actual value or the nature of the answer. But it does change the form here. So this b times b is now a b squared in the denominator. So this can pop out of here as another b in the denominator. And that would give me that would give me 2a over b squared times the square root of 5b. Okay, that's our answer. Let's look at the next one. The next one is the square root of m to the fourth n squared over 25. Well, everything under here is a perfect square. So we simply square root them. The square root of m to the fourth is just going to be m, and I'm sorry, m, the square root of m to the fourth will be m squared. The square root of n squared will be n, and the square root of 25 will just be 5. But these two will be in the numerator, and this will be in the no denominator. We just square root all of them. So we get an m squared times n in the numerator, and a 5 in the denominator. And that's the answer m squared n over 5. That one was pretty easy. This next one's a little bit more challenging and it, it's going to involve getting rid of the fraction as well. 4a cubed b squared over 9c to the fifth. Okay, let's see what we can do here. Well this, I'm going to, I'm going to rewrite it to show the intermediate steps here. 4 and then the a cubed is a squared times a and then a b squared up there. And uh, then we have 9. And I'm going to write c to the 5th as c to the 4th times c. Now what happens here? The 4 is going to become a 2 outside of the radical. The a squared is going to become an a. And the b squared is going to become a b. And then in the denominator, we're going to have the 9 get square rooted and become a 3. And the c to the 4th will get square rooted and become a c squared in the denominator. So it's going to look like this. We'll have a 2ab up top. And again, the 2 came from right there. The a came from square rooting the a squared. And the b came from square rooting that. And then in the denominator, we'll have a 3c squared. And the 3 came from square rooting that 9. And the c to the fourth came from, I'm sorry, the c squared right here came from square rooting that c to the fourth. And so we get a 3c squared right there. And what's left under the radical is the a up top and the c down below. So we have times the square root of a over c. Now again, you're not supposed to leave fractions under the radical 
So let's take care of that. I'm going to extend this and just multiply by C over C. And again, C over C is just 1, but what that does, instead of changing the value of this expression, it changes the form of the denominator right down here. That's a C squared right there. And when that gets square rooted, we get another C. All this goes away and comes out here as another C in the denominator. So my answer is going to be 2AB over 3C cubed. That extra C coming from right there times the square root of AC. That's my answer. 2AB over 3C cubed, all that times the square root of AC. Okay, these last two examples are a little bit different. Watch this. The square root of a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Now don't do this. Don't, in this case, don't say, okay, the a squared is going to pop out of here and become an a, and the b squared is going to pop out there and become a b. You can't do that. You can only do that if you have perfect square factors. And these things are not factors. These are all added together. These are what we call terms of this, this expression. This expression has three terms, but they're not factors. If we had this, just I'm um, looking over here, side note here, don't write this, but just look. If we had a squared times 2ab times b squared, then this could pop out of here and become an a and this could pop out of here and become a b. But that's not what we have. Instead of multiplication right there, we have addition. So what can we do here? So let's think. Hmm. Well, this might look familiar. You might remember doing this when we learned to multiply binomials. a plus b times a plus b. Let's work this out. We'll do a FOIL. If you do the first, you get an a squared. And if you do the outer, you get an AB, so A squared plus AB. And if you do the inner, you get another A times B. And when you do the last, you get a B squared. So we have A squared, combine those terms, A squared plus 2AB plus B squared. That's exactly this. So A squared plus 2AB plus B squared is mathematically equal to this. So instead of writing my problem like this, I can rewrite the whole problem like this. The square root of this thing. This, and that's a plus b squared. So I have the square root of a plus b squared. And the square root of anything squared is just that thing. So my answer then is simply a plus b. I get this answer by recognizing that this original expression under the radical is a perfect square expression. We'll do one more example like that one. Here it is, the square root of x squared minus 6x plus 9. Well, we want to factor that expression, and that expression actually does factor like this. It factors as x minus 3 squared. That might be tricky to see, but if you need to verify that, you can actually work this out. You can do x minus 3 and square it, which means you multiply by itself. And you do a FOIL. That gives you a x squared minus 3x minus 3x plus 9. And those two terms combine, so you get x squared minus 6x plus 9. So you should see that that is equivalent to that. So the square root of that is the same thing as the square root of that. And written this way, it's apparent that we have something squared. And the square root of something squared is just that something. So the answer ends up being x minus 3.